lovely Calumaris, this is Calumar here. It's been a hot minute since I've done another one of these opinion pieces and I would like to preface this video by saying that this isn't a drama or a hit piece on Gabby. This is just me giving some art advice and tips, analyzing drawings, and sharing my analysis of the situation in between. I'm sure we are all aware of the current situation concerning Gabby Hanna and all these allegations that are coming out about her. There are plenty of creators who are covering this topic extensively, so if you're interested in learning more about what's actually happening, I recommend checking out the videos by Adam McIntyre. Shout out to him, I'm a huge fan because his videos are the ones I watch surrounding this topic. Alizi, um, I'm also a huge fan of hers, also posted a video about Gabby's BuzzFeed interview where she goes through it in detail, and I recommend you guys watch that video too. One last video I want to recommend to you guys is by Sunny Z that gave an alternate perspective about the situation. She has a lot of shared experiences with Gabby and she mostly talks about her own experience going through similar situations and it's incredibly insightful and informative, especially about the experience of being on medications for mood disorders. I highly recommend you guys check the video out. but preferably after watching this video. Now, you guys know that I'm a very big advocate of mental health and because of that, I do feel like I have to say something about Gabby's behavior lately. One of the most important things about mental health is to never discredit another person's experience. If a person tells you they are depressed, suicidal, or anxious, then you should absolutely believe them because we're the only person who can know that for sure. We are all the experts of our own mind. But people like Gabby who purposefully act out and pretend like they're going through an episode for attention, which she has now confirmed in her own words on her live, on her Patreon and in her BuzzFeed interview, it makes it so much harder for people who actually are going through an episode to get help because people are less likely to believe them. And Gabby, I get it. If people hate you no matter what you do, might as well be the bad guy, right? If people are going to call you hysterical and crazy, then why not be hysterical and crazy and profit off of it? Make it work in your favor, right? Well, <laughs> if you stop thinking only about yourself for one second, you might realize that you acting this way and mentioning in every other sentence that you have ADHD and are neurodivergent and that this is all a result of your mental conditions that you are actively harming other people who also have ADHD and are neurodivergent. You are creating an even bigger stigma and making life very difficult for others with these conditions that you claim you're very passionate about and want to do good for. Because the fact is, everyone has mental health problems. You are not special. Other people have ADHD and PTSD too, but not everyone with those conditions is lashing out like you are. Mental illness is an explanation, but not an excuse. You are aware of your tendencies, exacerbating factors and protective factors, and it is your responsibility to keep yourself in check. The cold hard fact is, the world won't cater to you, sweetheart. As much as you want to believe the world will bend for you, it won't. Now. I don't want to discredit her experiences and the diagnoses she does have. And although I do have a background knowledge in mental illnesses from my bachelor's degree and experience working in a mental health ward, I can't and won't assume things about her mental state. I'm just extremely appalled and disappointed with everything that has come out recently. Particularly after reading about her own perception on her situation in the BuzzFeed interview she did and listening to her leaked phone call with Jesse Smiles. All I can hope is that her fans wise up and realize that what Gabby is doing is not okay and if she ever wants to be respected on YouTube again, 
constantly enabling and white knighting her isn't the way. Easing off a bit from that arguably heavier conversation topic, we are going to be doing something more lighthearted. Today, we are talking about art. Despite everything that's come out, I've started listening to Gabby Hanna's music because I've been watching a lot of videos about her and people have noted that some of her music is actually pretty good. I like giving people's creations a fair shot, so I decided to give it a go and I was really pleasantly surprised by it. Her music isn't anything revolutionary, but you can really tell that she is very passionate about it and she is genuinely a creative person. In fact, I was kind of blown away by some of the continuity she has in her videos and lyrics and you can tell that she really planned this out. My expectations weren't very high to begin with, but that's not really Gabby's fault because influencers who branch out to do music have pretty much tainted the reputation of influencer music. Yes, some songs are better than others, but there's just this, I don't know, comfortably homemade feeling to her music videos that I really enjoy. She has a very distinct sound, which I personally think is one of the most important things about being a singer. Um, I don't know, I like listening to something and then immediately being able to tell from their voice that, oh, this is so and so. And Gabby has that for me. See, as much as people bash on Gabby for her character, that doesn't change the fact that she is a very creative person and she is very desperate to break out of the labels that people have put on her. But the way she does this is the slimy part. It's kind of like how Disney child stars go through this extremely controversial phase to break off from their family-friendly past. She has written a couple of poetry books, which I've seen a lot of people review, including Rachel Oates, who is a content creator I absolutely adore. But I haven't really seen anyone taking a look at her illustrations and commentating on her art, so that's what I will be doing today. Granted, the last time I did something like this, I was hit with two consecutive copyright strikes on the same video, so we'll see how this goes. Now, Gabby doesn't really post her artwork publicly, so it was a bit difficult for me to find some samples and really analyze her style. I don't even know if she cares that much about her drawings to be honest, but I think it's great that at least she tried it. Again, this isn't a hit piece to make fun of Gabby Hanna's drawings, this is an educational video about drawing principles. So similar to my Lily Jean video, in case you guys haven't seen that, I've picked out a couple of illustrations that Gabby Hanna has done that personally caught my eye and I will be analyzing the good and the bad aspects of the piece and then reinterpreting it in my own style. First off, going through what I could find on Gabby Hanna's art, I can say with confidence that she has a unique style that I enjoy quite a bit. Her drawings have a childish simplicity to them while also adopting a more realistic style. It makes me think of contemporary detail art. A lot of her illustrations are of inanimate objects or abstract concepts and I don't know if that's what she just enjoys drawing in general or if it's because they were made specifically to complement the poems she wrote. It did make me wonder if she's ever drawn something first and then written a poem based off of that illustration though. I think that would have been really cool. Gabby's art is very metaphorical. They're statement pieces meant to convey a message. While I was watching Gabby's music videos and looking through her drawings, I noticed a pattern where she uses the imagery of eyes a lot. Now, it could be just fun for her to draw eyes and I've definitely gone through that phase as well but I feel like it might be an insight into how she feels like she's constantly being watched which as a large content creator she technically is. Another thing I noticed as well was that and this is just on her music in general a lot of her songs have the lyric of her saying that she is unwell Maybe that's how she really feels, maybe she's saying she's unwell for attention and sympathy points like she is now, but 
I'm not gonna go all armchair psychologist on her and try to psychoanalyze her. It's just something I found interesting. Another big praise I want to give Gabby is that when she really puts her mind to it, she really conveys these abstract concepts well. One example of this is the piece she drew for her poem titled Anxiety, where she's trying to illustrate how it feels to be suffocated by your mental illness, and I think she managed to accomplish that very well. It's simplistic, but it still manages to evoke a visceral feeling from you, which I'm sure is the intent. It's actually very similar to the piece I did on my video about depression, and I think it's really cool that we had a similar execution using the hands and the closed off body language to demonstrate suffocation and restriction. I'm the kind of person who likes giving people the benefit of the doubt, and going into this video, I was fully prepared to do just that. Uh, I genuinely love that Gabby is willing to try so many different creative mediums and I do believe she has a unique flair to everything she does. It doesn't matter if it's good or not because everyone has the potential to get better with time and effort. However, Gabby's actions so far has made it very apparent that she isn't really interested in doing that. Getting better, that is. She preaches positivity and being a better person while being one of the most toxic people on YouTube and never acknowledging her own shortcomings, let alone start addressing it. Who else do we know who acts like this? Well, that's right, Shane Dawson. So with all that being said, these are the pieces I've chosen to recreate today. And yes, I know these are just her poetry book cover art, but shut up because I like them. Before we get into it, please Follow me on my Instagram and Twitter if you're interested in seeing more from me and join my Discord server, link in the description. If you want some early access to uh, my video ideas, art, and get a say in what I do next because I'm on there almost every day. So this first piece is the cover art for her most recent poetry book, Dandelion, which is also the title of my favorite song from her at the moment. Right away, you get an impression of Gabby's aesthetic and although it might not be to everyone's taste, it works for the book. It's very simplistic, but this is a style that a lot of contemporary illustrators use. It reminds me of the visual aesthetic of Bojack Horseman, where it's proportionally realistic but cartoonishly simplistic. I think that summarizes Gabby's style pretty well. Gabby attempts to use realism, but it's clear that she lacks drawing foundations like anatomy, gesture, and line of motion, so it's just slightly off. You can tell that when she draws something, she draws based off of the outline instead of the actual basic shapes. This piece was actually redone for her dandelion music video, which is my favorite MV from her so far because it's fully animated and the visuals and colors are amazing and you can tell right away how it should look if Gabby had a bit more drawing experience. I love this reworking a lot. The artist nailed the anatomy perfectly while keeping to Gabby's art style, kind of. <laughs> Drawing in the skeleton, I was sure I would find something wonky about the head anatomy, but it was actually pretty solid. Everything is in proportion, and I guess you could argue that the nose is demonstrably too large for the face, but I understand that this is meant to be a self-portrait of Gabby herself, which in that regard would be accurate. My only nitpick for the head would be that the distance between the brows and eyes from the edge of the face is far too short, which would indicate a much flatter face or her eyebrows and her eyes being very close together, which doesn't make sense with the large nose. But what really ended up jumping out at me was the hand, which when I started lining it, I realized how creepy it looked. It, it kind of looked curmudgeonly somehow, and the nails were quite scary. They looked like claws and the hand itself looked really old and wrinkly. A lot of that, I guess, can be attributed to the over-detailing of the folds of the segments of the fingers, 
there are situations where it would be beneficial to over detail your drawings for instance when you're drawing an older person or purposely trying to make a character look unsettling and i feel like it's a trap that a lot of artists can fall into sometimes regardless of skill level and in this case it definitely worked against what gabby was trying to go for uh, she doesn't really take criticism she says she can and that she does, but she has said herself that she doesn't watch any of the videos that criticize her. She just looks at the thumbnail and title and immediately draws conclusions. So maybe if I title this video something really nice and harmless, she might actually watch it. So Gabby, if you are watching and you made it this far, I'm not saying that this drawing isn't good or that it's a bad drawing. This is just... This is just how I would do it if I made this drawing. I actually just got a new drawing tablet that I'm using in this video, so I'm still trying to figure everything out. I'm doing a review of it in my next video, so subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss that. But because it is a whole new setup, I messed up the recording for when I did the initial sketching of my remake and I actually had to re-record the base sketch for Gabby's original drawing like 5 times until it didn't come out messed up. Uh, so for my last drawing tips video, we did the whole shebang from sketching to coloring and shading. But for this one, as Gabby's drawings are mostly shaded line art, I thought we could focus more on sketching and line dynamics. So we will mostly be relying on ornamentation and manual shading to achieve our appeal. It's actually really good practice for me as well to focus more on my line and shapes. Now, in, if you guys have watched my videos, you would know that my style is probably the furthest thing from realism. So this is just me trying to make it my own as much as I can. The thing that bothered me the most about Gabby's drawing was how the hair looked. I've never been a big fan of drawing hair one strand at a time because it's really hard to create volume, dimension, and flow. You tend to become more focused on filling in all the gaps that you don't really notice how the shape looks and by the time you filled everything in, you realize how flat and shapeless it looks and when you try to correct it, you're fighting against the direction of the strands that were already drawn and you end up with areas that are more densely packed or sparser and the whole thing looks patchy. Gabby's original drawing definitely suffered from that, so from my rendering, I've just blocked out the general silhouette of the hair following the wind direction and I'm going to detail it later. I decided to make the hair fly behind the character because that way I'm not concealing the neck and face as much. It's not realistic, but I just thought it would make it more appealing. As you've noticed, I'm also making this more of a semi-full body instead of just a headshot or bust and that's because I felt like I could express more of the feeling I want to convey if I could show it through the subject's body language. So I gave her a pretty relaxed posture, sitting slightly slouched, wearing very casual clothes which um, I wanted it to feel very mundane and unextraordinary. When I pose a character, I like to focus more on the flow than the actual shapes. I find it helps my characters look less stilted and expressive since I bend the shape of their body to follow the line of motion rather than the other way around. You guys gave me really good feedback about my art when I started doing my redesigns and I find that it genuinely helped me improve my anatomy a lot. Your criticism helped me notice a flaw I never would have noticed otherwise and it pointed me in the right direction for how I could improve myself. See, how can you say you've improved if you're not aware of what you needed to improve on in the first place? That's something I think about a lot with these big YouTubers who just block everything out. Creators who have said that they look at their feedback and list some things they want to improve on yet completely miss the points that were being brought up or just slyly work their way around it using vague statements so that their fans aren't aware of what's really going on, which makes them easier to defend, I guess. But what I think happens is they don't really know what the issue is or they're really, really defensive about it. They just assume what is being said about them, 
confirmation bias and all of that, and their own assumptions is what they end up addressing. It's like that episode in Phineas and Ferb where they find a machine that they have no idea what it does, so they reverse engineer a new machine and work with that instead of the original machine. That's sort of how I see it. I think if Gabby were to actually listen to what people are saying, she would really benefit from it more than just stubbornly shutting everything out and labeling it as hate. And don't get me wrong, I know she does get a lot of real hate and undeserved messages. She's a hypocrite, a narcissist, a gaslighter, manipulator, bully, and liar, but she's also a person. So please don't send any hate to her, because that's just gonna make it even harder for her to actually open herself up to valid feedback. Her poetry could be genuinely good if she took the criticism or enrolled in some classes to learn the foundations of poetry writing. Her art could also be much better if she studied some basics and drawing rules, but she doesn't. She does, however, try to improve her music. She took singing lessons, dance lessons, and worked with people with more experience than her, and I think we can all agree that her music is leagues better than her poetry and art. And yet, she takes no input for her poetry at all, and just brags about how good it already is. She genuinely thinks it's the best she can possibly be, and I think that's really sad. Imagine telling yourself that you'll never get better than the skill level you're at now. That this is it. This is as good as it's gonna get. Really, when you refuse to take criticism and implement change, the only person you're hurting is yourself. Because you're putting yourself in a box, closing your eyes and ears, and limiting your own growth. Sometimes, you need to open your eyes and see that there's a much bigger world out there. And instead of feeling small in comparison and running back to your little box, see it as an opportunity to grow into a bigger space. But back to the drawing, my focus was definitely more directed towards the facial expression in this piece because it was lacking in both renditions to tell the true story of how this character feels. I wanted to make her look sad but hopeful, like this dandelion is her last resort that will somehow grant her wish and fix everything. Small details like the eyebrows where the eyelids sit on the eyes and the size of the pupils are one of the most effective ways you can achieve this. Later on, I also add wrinkles around the eyebrows and eyes to show strain, focus, and add emphasis to her expression, since realistically, our skin folds when we move our facial muscles around. But absence of wrinkles on the face can also be beneficial in certain contexts. For example, you can use this to characterize a character who is very controlled or refined, since they can stop themselves from emoting and gives off a feeling of calm and tranquility. Or it can indicate someone who hides their emotions well. For this piece, I thought it was a great opportunity to play with monochromes, so I ended up using the muted yellow and brown from the music video, and a little bit of white later on for the eyes. I mentioned this before in my Lily Jean video, but I really don't like colors that are on the absolute maximum height of saturation, because it makes me feel like my retinas are burning and it swallows everything around and inside of it. Gabby's version looks like she took the ink of a yellow highlighter pen and poured it all over. I'm pretty sure this yellow is actually brighter than what ended up being used for her book cover too, which just shows how bright this is. I don't know, imagine if her music video used this shade of yellow instead of the current muted shade instead. So, after some finishing touches and ornamentation, this is what the final drawing looks like. For the second drawing, I'm gonna start with the positives. First of all, the colors and hair shape are already so much better, which addresses two of my previous points, and that's funny because this was an earlier work. As you can see, Gabby drew larger segments for the hair which filled out space a lot better and made it easier for her to fill out because she had a better map. The color is also a lot easier on the eyes and the bright, bright yellow. Um, once again, her art style is very apparent and I think she did a pretty good job capturing her own likeness, though 
You could sort of see that she's hiding one side of the face a little with her hair. It's an easy trick to mask wonkiness because the mind fills in the gaps for us. But once we draw in the skeleton and take it to its barest form, it's pretty, uh, pretty unsettling. I don't know how else to put it. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that the facial expression is so ambiguous. It's like you're not really sure what emotion she's feeling or even where her eyes are looking exactly. Since she's looking up, I'm assuming she's looking at the little people inside her head, but it also looks like she's looking past them with a thousand yard stare while looking at us at the same time. It's just a bit creepy, if I'm being honest. There's this amazing artist called Tracy J. Butler who is the creator of Lackadaisy, which I highly recommend you guys check out, especially if you're into old-timey crime stories, smugglers, and cats. And she did a tutorial about focusing eyes. When pupils are moved closer together, it indicates a shorter seeing distance, meaning you're looking at something closer by. The reverse is also true. When they're further apart, that indicates a longer seeing distance. This is also a test we do in the hospital and GP clinics to check a person's oculomotor nerve or cranial nerve 3, where we will put a pen in front of their face and ask them to look at the far wall and then to look at the pen in front of them. What we should see is an inward movement of the pupils, like you're going cross-eyed, to focus on the pen. It's all super legit and backed up by science, so yeah, you should do it in your drawings too. Tracy makes a lot of helpful art tutorials like this, so I highly, highly recommend you guys check her and her comic out. You can find it on Webtoons or on her website, which is linked in the description. For this piece, I have a different idea for what I want to do, but my interpretation of the original work is this. Gabby is trying to say that this book, and therefore her poetry, is a dissection of what's going on inside her head. This is symbolized by the top of her head being cut open to see what's inside, and inside, we see that it's full of water, people, and a gooey monster guy. But what if I'm the monster? Am I right? Anyway, that gives the impression of her head feeling very crowded, and it's full of different people, which makes me think maybe she's constantly thinking of other people, or she has a lot of people that gets in her head, or maybe the people symbolize different emotions she feels or parts of her identity. Who knows? I decided to carry the concept of showing your thoughts for all to see in my piece, but I'm going to expand it to a wider space like a thought bubble to help fill out space and give me more room to illustrate those thoughts. What it did also make me think though is that Gabby Hanna is very focused on herself. It's very apparent that through her behavioral patterns that she thinks of herself first and other people never. She has a song called Special where she talks about how she wants to feel special and how she's grappling with the idea that she might not be special but then her conclusion is that fuck you I am special and I found the lyrics really interesting because uh, it says you drag my name it's kind of funny cause my name makes you lots of money I guess I'm special special who the hell are you to say I'm not special and also I'm trying so hard to understand how I'm the master manipulator who couldn't fool anyone, the monster reciprocator, shot no bullets from my gun, the drama queen who never seems to get applause from anyone. I think it's really interesting because this song implies that Gabby doesn't think she did anything wrong and is being dragged wrongfully. And that in itself could be a defense mechanism. People who do horrible things sometimes can delude themselves into thinking they did nothing wrong to protect their own mental state. And I will give Gabby that benefit of the doubt. But there's also a part of me that thinks she believes herself to be above YouTube now. 
Like she genuinely believes that she deserves to be in the mainstream with Ariana Grande and Taylor Swift. This is especially indicative in her BuzzFeed interview. I believe that's why she always treats everyone on YouTube so poorly while also completely kissing up to the mainstream artists who challenged her like Bo Burnham and Baby Rexa. Other content creators though? No, they're beneath her. Their criticism doesn't matter if they're not famous or important enough. Gabby is like that kid in high school who desperately wants to hang out with the cool kids to the point that she will burn bridges with the friends she does have because she thinks they aren't cool enough. But most of her audience and networks are on YouTube though, so if she alienates them, then who's gonna continue to support her? Nobody. Gabby genuinely has a unique voice and an interesting take on art and music, but as much as you want to say don't judge a book by its cover, impressions really do matter, especially when you've done more wrongs than right. People have morals, unless they're young children who are extremely gullible and don't know right from wrong, they're not gonna support you if you do something objectively reprehensible like protecting a rapist. Anyway, I initially thought of doing a floating head like Gabby, but the idea of just a floating head unnerved me a little bit, so I gave her a torso to ease my anxiety. I drew her putting a hand on her face because to me, that helps emphasize that she's thinking and I also find that it's a self-soothing gesture I do when I'm anxious or have too many thoughts. The next thing on my list was her facial expression. As I've said in my previous video, when you do busts or headshots, it gives you an opportunity to really detail the face since that's where the attention will mostly be focused to. But it's also a double-edged sword because anything that is off about the face is also more easily noticed. When you have a full frontal view like this, it's especially difficult because symmetry becomes key when it comes to the facial features. But one way I like to cheat is to just copy and paste one eye and flip it over for the other side. Don't at me, I'm a horrible person. I gave her a more expressive face by playing with the eyebrows, making it look like she's got one eyebrow raised, like she's trying to work something out. And then I played with her lips a little to make it look like she's pulled it to one side and pursing it in thought. Because I'm emulating the rough sketch feel of Gagadi, <laughs> Gabby's drawing, I am manually shading everything with a pencil tool like the previous drawing and adding ornamentation as I see fit. For the thought bubble, I decided to draw references of pretty much every major event in Gabby's career, starting with gossips and rumors, be it ones about her or ones she spread about other people, her poetry books, dandelions, a microphone for her music career, a monster caricature because of course, a broken phone, which is a reference to her and Rice Gum's beef, and fire to represent her literally burning down her YouTube reputation. In hindsight, I probably should have also included some makeup brushes for her Kenza Cosmetics controversy, but oh well. After some finishing touches, this is the final result. Let me know what you guys thought of my redraws and what you would have done if you were making your own interpretation. But to wrap things up, Gabby is so desperate to upgrade herself to the next level of fame and she might well achieve that someday. I also believe when she does, nobody is going to know about her history because the mainstream media aren't as plugged into YouTube. So she might well get a clean slate, and I think she's also heavily relying on that fact. However, what she doesn't realize is that habits are hard to break. Gabby has demonstrated poor behavior for years. She has shown a pattern of being a compulsive liar. She manipulates people, hurts people, stabs them in the back, and refuses to acknowledge anything. 
She isn't going to change overnight and suddenly become a better person just because she manages to move into the mainstream. That behavior is going to carry over and then she'll be causing problems in a bigger pond with bigger fish. Much bigger fish than herself. Your music is good, Gabby, but not that good. And that's not me being a hater. I'm just literally saying that it's not unique. It's not a unique sound like Billie Eilish or Doja Cat. It's not subversive. It's not fresh. It's not fun. In fact, it's pretty generic. So I highly doubt she's going to be able to attract as many new fans. That means she will definitely need to rely on the audience she currently has. And if her current views are of any indication, it's far from enough. What's even worse is that she's already disliked on TikTok as well, which would have been her best shot to get her music to blow up. So, the saddest part in all of this is that if she does get to where she wants to be in the mainstream, she's going to quickly be drowned out by the hundreds of thousands of other performers out there. You may think you're a diamond Gabby, but without YouTube, you're just another grain of sand in a vast desert, just like the rest of us.